So today is an exciting day, and while at the same time, it's a sad day. And I'm going to explain that a little bit here momentarily, though I think you can already figure it out. When you think of names of folks in the Bible, there's usually the list that pops into your mind. Like right now, if I was going to ask you a name in the Bible, somebody that's in the Bible, character from the Bible, you're probably going to come up with the obvious names, right? Like whom? Jesus, Paul, Abraham, Peter, Moses, Noah, Adam, Eve, right? These are names that are going to pop up because we, we read about them and we know about them. And reality is there's many, many folks within the pages of Scripture from Genesis through Revelation um, where God's word, God used them just like you and I. They're common people like you and I. And God called them to go out, right? Right? And why did they go out? Because they wanted to obey God. Just like when Abraham, God came to Abraham, says, I want you to pick up and I want you to go. Did Abraham know exactly where he was going? No, but he trusted God to lead the way. And in fact, Jesus said in Matthew 10, 16, didn't he? Behold, what's he say? I'm sending you, what? Out. He goes, I'm going to send you out. I should just stop there, but you've got to finish reading it. And he says, I'm sending you out as what? As sheep amongst the wolves. Do you know what wolves do to sheep? They eat them. They want to destroy them. They, it's a food source for them. Growing up on the farm in, in North Dakota, we didn't have wolves, but we had foxes and we had little little um, lynxes and little cougars and stuff like that. And if they got if they could get a hold of a baby calf or the chickens, they didn't sit there and play with it. They didn't want to become its best friend. They wanted to kill it. And yet that's what Jesus is saying here. He says, I'm sending you out as sheep, that's us, amongst the wolves. The wolves is the world, right? So he says, be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. We, the church, are going out and we are commanded to go out, okay? Another example in Scripture of someone going out that we may not think about, and he, he may not even hit our top ten, he may not even hit our top 20 because he's only mentioned two times in Scripture and some of us would probably breeze right over his name, just the fact I'll breeze right over his name because I don't want to try to pronounce his name. Right? But there is somebody that God used and he used him in the same way that he used everybody else and he continues to use people today. And his name is E. Per oh no, I'm going to screw it up again. Epaphroditus, Epaphroditus, right? So he's only mentioned two times in the book of Philippians, and Paul says of him in Philippians two twenty five. But I thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother. And Paul describes what he does. He's a brother to Christ, which means what? He's a believer, right? So he's a brother to Christ. He's a fellow worker. So he's, been, he's working with Paul, doing the ministry that Paul's doing. And he says he's also a fellow soldier. He's also your messenger and minister to my need. And now you might be thinking, well, why do we need to know about Epaphroditus. Because some speculate, and we ultimately don't know, but some speculate that the church in Philippi saw a need that Paul had, and so they designated him to go meet that need for Paul. Right? And so they commissioned him, they sent him out, and he went and ministered with Paul. Because Paul did say that. He takes care of my ministering to my need. But then Paul, in turn, writes a letter to the church in Philippi, and guess who he gives it to? 
He gives it to him and sends him back to the church. And that's why some say he's significant because he hand-delivered the book of Philippians, which we're reading, to the church in Philippi. He hand-delivered it. And so if he wouldn't have been there, if he wouldn't have obeyed, we might not have the book of Philippians, right? So there's a significance to it. The word messenger that Paul uses is a term that means one commissioned and sent out. And so he was commissioned and he was sent out. And by commissioning, it simply means that he was publicly identified by the body of Christ, the right person to meet that need that they knew that there was. So if Paul had that need, he was the one to meet it. And in a public way then, they shared it with the congregation that with the fellowship in the church in Philippi. And so that's why he was sent out. And the reality is, Epaphroditus set the example and really paved the way for many people ever since then, many, many, many thousands who have been sent out by fellowships to join God's activity to do the ministry beyond their local context. And honestly, the reality is we're all called, aren't we? Locally, and some are called to go abroad. So why is the church going out? Well, let's read what it says here. If you brought your Bible, you can open it up to 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 21. And if you want to, if you got your technology, you're welcome to use that as well. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 21. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the word to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Which is part of why we come to the communion table today. Because remember, what did we just read? He didn't impute the death sentence onto us. He imputed the death sentence onto Christ, which is what? The death sentence for disobedience for sin. Now, the definition of an ambassador, as it says, we are called to be his ambassadors then, ambassadors for Christ. Definition of an ambassador is somebody who is officially recognized by a, per, by a person who is officially recognized by a country and is sent out to represent this, uh, that country in a foreign setting, in another foreign country. So, and another word that we saw in there then is the word reconciliation. Word to reconcile, it's, a, it's, a, it's an accounting term. And so, but because of rebellion, back in the garden with Adam and Eve, humanity became an enemy of God and fell out of fellowship with God. And because God loves us so much, he wants to restore that fellowship. And through the work of the cross, Jesus Christ has brought us and God back together. That's that fellowship to restore. Is it done? Nope. It won't be done until it completed until Christ returns. And the reality is for us to remember is God does not have to be reconciled to us. It's we humanity who have to be reconciled to God. And the only one that could do that was God himself. And that was accomplished by Jesus Christ on the cross. And it is God's desire 
Remember what we just read? It is God's desire that we would implore people on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. God wants people to be reconciled. God doesn't want to see anybody go to hell. And the reality is God doesn't send anybody to hell. If somebody ends up in hell, it's their what? It's their choice. You're choosing, right? So you see, Christians in this world, and even right here today, we are called to be the ambassadors of Christ, being sent out as God's representatives to deliver a message of what? Reconciliation. We're not called to deliver a message of judgment. That's God's job. I'm not even called to convict people of their sin. That's the Holy Spirit's job. My job is to preach the gospel of reconciliation. Right? That's our job. That's our calling, which is restoring that friendship between you and God, which can only happen because of what happened on the cross. Right? So we, the church, represent Jesus Christ and he sends us out. The second you get up and you walk out these sanctu the sanctuary doors and you walk out into the other, through the other doors and you walk into the community, you are in the mission field. You got up this morning in your home. When you walked out of your house, you're in the mission field. But the reality is you're actually even in the mission field, even in your house. And that's what we're called to do. We deliver this message of reconciliation to our community, where we live, where we work, where we play, right? And at times, God will call some to go further out beyond their own community. Just as Epaphroditus was selected and he was sent out to deliver God's message, to go minister with Paul, to serve with Paul. And like Paul said, this is a fellow soldier. Today, we are doing the same. Which is why I said earlier, it's an exciting day, but it's also a sad day. So today we are selecting and sending out Though technically, <laughs> they've already been selected. They've already been sent out more than once. And they've come back. And then they've gone out again. So today what we are doing, though, is reaffirming and resending. We are reaffirming and sending out Dana and Debbie Cherry to deliver God's message of reconciliation to Germany along with the group that they minister with the Greater Europe Mission. Because I think the reality is, and you guys can correct me, is because where they live and they're part of an international school, you probably actually interact more with non-Germans within the German culture. Right? I mean, it's, it's not just Germans that you're interacting with. It's, it's everybody. And so when Dana asked for us to do this, you know, I talked with our missions ministry, and everyone said, absolutely, we'll send them out. Like I said, though, it's sad. Because they've been with us now, what, 15 months, give or take. And in that time... They've gotten to know us better. We've gotten to know them better. And, and I know the, Debbie's been very much a part of the ladies' Bible study and ministry. And Dana's been a part of our men's Bible study and ministry. And, and he, Dana's also been a part of a group of pastors that um, we get together. We usually try to get together every, every Thursday. But um, that, you know, a group that are just praying for the gospel message here in Cape May, but also abroad. And, and so he's been very much a part of that. So 
If Dana and Debbie would come down front, I would appreciate that. And you guys can just stay down there. I'll stay up here. So, um, and then John, if you want to come up too. So, today, this body of Christ, like I said, is reaffirming and resending them out. And, and so by doing this, we, the church, this body of Christ called Cape Island Baptist Church, is saying that we see evidence. We see evidence in their lives, in their walk with Jesus Christ. And that we are sending them again to be an extension of this body of Christ of, for Cape Island Baptist Church, the people of Germany, along with their other partners that they minister with, to be God's ambassadors. To be the hands and the feet and the mouth of Jesus Christ, to whom the Lord will place on their path. But here's the reality, folks. What the what we're going to be doing here very shortly is a charge that I'm going to give to them. But this charge is really for all of us. If you say you're a follower of Jesus Christ, then this charge is for you. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord and been baptized, then this charge is not for you yet. And if you haven't done that, please come talk to us. Because like I said, we'll, we'll baptize you. We'll dunk you like a Dunkin' Donut. Okay? <laughs> Dana and Debbie have a scripture passage which is the theme to their ministry. And it's Colossians 1, 28 through 29, which Brother John is going to read. So, good morning. Colossians uh, chapter 1, verse 28 through 29, Dana and uh, Debbie, as, as you know. Uh, it says, Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that, they may, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end, I also labor, striving according to his work in which works in me, um, me mighty. Amen. Amen. So, Dana and Debbie, if you would, because I know this is, this is your mantra for your ministry, would you share briefly um, why you picked this scripture passage to be your theme? So, yeah, you can come up here if you want. Double check the mic, make sure it's on. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> um, Colossians 1, 28 and 29 has been uh, a significant verse for us because it focuses on preaching Christ. It's not about us. It's about Christ being the, the message, about Christ being the, the intent of, and focus of our ministry. It also talks about making disciples who are mature. Uh, the, the passage he read used, uh, I think, the word perfect. Uh, but maturity is the idea. We don't want to just make believers in Christ. We want to make mature followers of Christ who are able to make other disciples of Christ. And so we're very intent on making disciples who can make disciples. And we've seen God allow us to do that in ministry. Uh, some of the disciples that we've made in Greece are now continuing to make disciples, and that's the goal for which we seek. And then Paul includes that last section that he says, it's God's powerful work within us because we want to remember and always operate out of the strength that God gives us, not our own strength. We can't accomplish anything but God through us can accomplish mighty works. 
And so because of those concepts that Paul has condensed down into those two verses, uh, we've seen God lay that verse, those verses on our hearts as we continue to do ministry in Europe, in Germany, and throughout Europe. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you. So, and hopefully, because they leave on August 12th, and so if you have time between now and then to chat with them, if you listen to them, they're going to tell you and they will demonstrate to you how God has been faithful, which they said earlier. But they're really not even giving you the tip of the iceberg of what God has really done to get them to be able to go here, let alone the COVID thing. You know, everything else with visas and passports and, you know, the selling of a home and all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, it's it. When we do a baptism, I always make a charge to the candidate being baptized, and then we make a charge to the congregation. Today I'm doing the same thing. And like I said earlier, this charge, though, that I'm going to give to to Dana and Debbie is really a charge to all of us. Because if we're truly the body of Christ and we call ourselves Christians, then, then it says we're ambassadors. That we are supposed to be out reconciling the world. It doesn't mean you need to take the Bible and go down on the promenade or over here in Washington Street Mall and start preaching. Though if God tells you to do that, by all means, go do it. Obey God, as Dr. Charles Stanley says, obey God and leave the consequences to him. But being that ambassador is what we're called to do every day. And so today, we're going to give a charge. First, the charge is to Dana and Debbie. And this is a charge that you're you're already doing. It's like, what what kind of charge do I give them? You know, what what do I what do I hold you up to? And I'm gonna hold them up to the same thing that we're all called to be held up to. And the charge is this, Dana and Debbie. Do you commit to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind? Loving your neighbor in Germany as you love yourself. As God's ambassadors of reconciliation. If this is your intent today, before these witnesses, please reaffirm your commitment by saying, Amen. 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 And thank you both so much. On behalf of all these people, thank you so much for your commitment. Now, I charge the congregation. So if you all would please stand. Brothers and sisters of this body of Christ called Cape Island Baptist Church, are you willing to commit to love and support this family by praying for them encouraging them and being there for them even when they're going to be thousands of miles apart from us if this is your intent today would you please say amen Amen. Amen. and thank you as well for your commitment too now remain standing as we take a time we normally would come down and gather around and lay hands on them and pray for them But guess what? Well, we could really do it, but we're not going to. Because, of course, if we did it and we laid hands on you and something happened, you couldn't go. So I'm starting to think here, you know, no, we don't. We want them to go. So so we're going to take a moment and pray for them. And so if you feel led to pray during this time of prayer, please pray. And then I will close this up. So let's pray.
And our heavenly and most merciful Father, we are so thankful for the cloud of witnesses around us, many who step out in faith and trust you. Father, if we could do all of this in our own strength, then what do we need you for? The Father, we know there's nothing we can do apart from you. And so, Father, we, we lift up the whole Cherry family to you. As they are preparing to leave on August 12th, Father, we pray that the final days here would go smoothly, peacefully. And, Father, that the task before them yet they have to complete will get completed. And, Father, that their trip to the airport and the flight over and their, their time in, in self-quarantine, Father, would go smoothly. And, Father, they're going to have to adjust again to another culture, even though it's a culture they're familiar with. So Father, we just pray for strength. And Father, we thank you so much for them and how much they've touched our lives. And Father, just as we are excited in sending them, there are a group of people over there that are just as excited to receive them and welcome them back home. But Father, we also know they have family here that are sad to see them leave as well. But Father, we thank you for technology, because through technology, they can stay connected. We can stay connected to them. And Father, as they go as your ambassadors, as we all go as your ambassadors, may what we think, may what we say, and may what we do as your ambassadors of reconciliation be glorifying to you and edifying to your body of Christ called the church. Because Father, there is so much going on right now. But you, the triune God, are sovereign. You are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And Father, help us hold on to that until that day when either we die or your son returns, that we would live in such anticipation that we would share it just as what Dana and Debbie have been doing here and as they go abroad. Father, we thank you so much for them. And we thank you for so much for this cloud of witnesses. And we ask this in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. You all can be seated. So can you. As we come to the communion table, you each have in, in, your, in the pew, just like a couple weeks ago when we got together, we had communion. There's a little self-communion cups. Um, and so we're going to be taking communion here very shortly. But one of the things I wanted to remind you of, because remember what we read earlier, that Jesus said, I'm sending you as sheep out amongst the wolves. You know, we have to re be remembered. We have to remember that Satan is seeking, because he's the wolf, right? But he is seeking to tear everything apart, which God is trying to do. And we know as you read scripture in the end, who prevails? God does. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They will, he will prevail. And so ministry, it's not easy. And when I'm saying ministry, I'm not talking about necessarily what I, what I just do, but ministry is what we all do. Ministry is called living out the faith in the way. And so we got to be motivated not by fear, but by fear of God, that reverence for God, right? But also the love of Christ. Why do we do the things we do? Because the love of Christ compels me to do. 
right? And that's the commission. That's what we're called to do. And so it is. It really is a privilege to really serve them. So as we come to the communion table, um, Sherry's going to play a song before we take communion. And so as she, the song is being played, just prepare your hearts for the communion table. And remember, do like what David said. Lord, examine my heart. And if there's anything in it, any offense, bring it out so I can deal with it before you. Because if it's left to our own, we'll bring it up and go, yeah, I'm good. I haven't offended myself, but have you offended God? So as Sherry's playing, please spend some time with God and listen to his spirit.